Hello everyone, this is Stages School, and while going render I decide to look for something interesting in internet and I find an article about the pixels, the movie, how they create effect, work in Houdini and other stuff, and I think what about 3 d Studio Max, how we can quickly create those pixels inside of this program. Without going inside of textures and modeling, just basic effect, destruction object into pixels. And the first thought that I has it has to be pretty easy. Take some geometry, create particles, which are gonna be pixels, and create simple destruction. So you can do this inside of PFLow or inside of Thinker Particles, whatever you want, what plugin or what tool you know better. But there is always but if we use simple geometry like a box, you know, with the straight lines, with a nice straight size uh, definitely you can easily divide it or distract this into boxes or cubes because it has straight lines no curves no curvature and um, you know that in the real world and inside of this program not all objects <laughs> have the straight lines so we can have a sphere which is Definitely difficult to divide into boxes, divide into pixels. So we need to deal with this problem. Let's say I want to add some testing geometry and of course this is the teapot. It's the best geometry for testing ever. Yep. So I Increase the number of segments because I want to have a nice smooth size. And let's say what I want to do, I want to destruct, create a destruction. Uh, like this handle, I think I will add an explosion, something, and um, I want to explode, destroy this handle, and then create the spread, the spreading of this explosion. Um, to the other sides of the teapot and I think that will be it. So what we need to do? Uh, actually uh, we need to divide this teapot by the boxes, actually voxels, maybe pixels but they look like voxels, volumetric pixels, and we need to divide this teapot by the cubes. So what we need to do? We need to, let's see, I want to use my thinker particles. Okay, this is our origin object. Oops. And that's how we call it. Adding this object into my original layer group. And add my thinker particles to the TP group. So I can just quickly switch between them, just hide one and unhide another one. And what I want to do, okay, let's see, um, I can fill this teapot with some particles and convert these particles into cubes. And that's gonna look like we need. Let's see how we can easily do it. So I need to create some origin objects, okay. Maybe, or even I call those pixels and oops, sorry, create a few dynamic sets. And I want to pixels gen creating groups. Create my first dynamic set, call it pixel gen. So I want to generate some particles inside of my teapot. For that, I add my um, position burn node. I want to name it to be burn. So I create some particles inside of this teapot. I'm adding particles inside of group pixels. Let's say 1000 for a start. The lifespan is 200. In case if our scene is larger than 100 frames and I don't want to fly them anywhere and actually it so if you can see those particles yeah we have it 
Uh, well, actually, I don't want to talk about thinking particles now. This is not what we're talking about today, so I won't explain all those things. What is the groups? What is the dynamic sets? What is nodes? How it's work and etc. I just want to show you how to quickly set up my thing to for creation kind of pixels effect. And now I want to take my pixels. Okay, they are somewhere on my origin on my start of coordinates and I want to place them on the teapot surface so I can use my teapot as close object so I can just cap my holes and we have my and teapot now don't have any holes so actually a teapot if you see and just um, take a fleet you see that it's empty inside and it doesn't have any thickness they're just polygons and if you want to fill object with voxels or actually pixels I need to make this object close so I kept holes I think that will be good and I can choose my teapot with the note, 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 all right, my original object, and select my position using the volume position node. Okay, I say, all right, let's take my teapot and create inside of it some positions for my particles. And now I need to add position. So, uh, first of all, I create some particles and then I apply pos position for those created particles because I can do this inside of position inside of my particle burn yeah I can switch it here you know set it but actually I prefer to use this method and now we see that there are some particles let's I make them more interested color just make them red so I can better see them and you see that they fill in my object inside of inside of teapot and each frame the following position create a new array of positions for each particle so that's not actually what we want to see so I want to connect the particles into volume position then they will be static so in my first frame volume position create the position positions for for all particles and they're not moving they're not changing position during my simulation now all right the next thing i want to go into my pixels group and set standard shape for them just cube inside of master dynamic i want to show mesh to see those cubes and now we're here. So actually, we can do. It's going to object properties and say display as a box for my teapot. And we can see that there is inside 1000 boxes. You will see there the total amount of particles is just 1000. That is correct. And but I, what I want to create is actually they are spreading randomly inside of object so I want to use raster for them just check use raster and uh, well the default setting here is 10 so now we see let's I just hide my region okay now I see my particles it's look like it's 1000 particles but actually um, they inside one of another and there is too small amount because the spreading of these particles now not randomly the position is direct 10 units so distance between not position sorry distance between those particles is 10 so I want to set, okay, I have a raster 1 
Now those particles are just one about the other, because the size of any particles is one and raster is one, so distance between them is one, two, one unit. Uh, actually, this amount of particle is too small and those particles too small, so I want to set the size of my pixels and tell that I want to have a size 2 and with this raster distance 2 so now you see that there's not enough particles to fill the all object because we have just 1000 and I think the not we will be enough and 5000 uh, not enough 6000 all right we have 6000 particles and now this look like my original object okay let's see what do you see that exactly what we need well in fact for destruction I can use it but somehow we need to merge the original object with those boxes let's unhide this and choose and check this place box and the merge origin object with those particles is not so easy because some um, group will stick out from geometry size and create some hole to sign of it especially problematic this will look if we not feel the internal of objects so we not feel the inside of this object we just feeling the sides the sides are pretty thin and that will be not easy so what I mean that I want to take my original object and create a shell actually I can set 10 on camp holes and create a shell not outer just inner amount maybe one or something like that so what do we have now we have the volume inside of our sides, size of our box um, object okay there's inside of object and now when we fill those sides with the particles it's gonna look like this yeah and hide my tp hide my origin now you see that <laughs> Actually, we don't need now 6,000, maybe 2,000 will be good. So, yeah, there's many holes and if I want to replicate the origin objects, I need to decrease my size till 1 or even less. Decrease my raster to 1 or less. And maybe sometimes it will look like an origin but I think that those cubes are too small for my effect it's pretty small boxes pretty small pixels I want to have them a little bit bigger so let's say I want to have a size like 1.5 not 1 not 2 just go middle uh, let's say 1.5 uh, but if we can see my origin teapot especially if we see on my handle this actually will be very hard to merge this object with our particles because when we create a dynamic when we're gonna create an explosion so those particles will be falling down and we will see what is inside of our object and we need to see that this object's like it's look like it's um, made from uh, with those pixels and they fill in this object and that will be pretty hard so we need to um, create another we need to go another way and this way I think is fragmentation I just disable my particle generator and I want to fragment this origin object into pixels 
or actually actually into voxels or how we'd call it inside of 3D Studio Max into bricks. Well, actually, I don't want to create bricks inside of all objects. I think that the spreading will be till this distance from my handle is going somewhere there. So I will break apart in just a half of this teapot. So I duplicate it or actually better make slice first. Create slice plane. Just round it and not round, so rotate this thing. Actually, I like half, this will be good. All right, remove top or remove bottom. I can put it below the shell. So, remove bottom, uh, and we have this origin object. That's my teapot, how it will look. Okay, I don't want to dis to destroy this, but the clone, I call it origin, let's say, frags. Origin frags. Okay, oops, instance, sorry. Disable instancing. And with the slice, I want to remove top, and I have two objects. Object frags and original objects. And now this object frags, I will divide into uh, into bricks or into boxes. How I can do this? Actually, we can use Refire Fragmenter, uh, Refire Voronoi or other tools, but if you work in think inside of Thinker Particles, I prefer to use Volume Breaker. I can use it inside of uh, Thinker Particles or just as modificator inside of uh, object settings. So I turn on my regular bricks and they try to uh, just break apart my object into brick. So let's say um, the gold middle, right? 1.5 depth, 1.5 height, 1.5. Okay, so what we can see that again we need to increase the maximum cells. Actually, it's not use the maximum now and it almost fill in my object well that's fine yeah maybe a little bit more 22,000 Because I don't want to destroy, I think, this thing, but it will collide with my particles. When I'm gonna create my explosion here, some bricks or my pixels can fly to, uh, to this thing. Okay, it's better. And collide with them. Alright, now I'm going to sink a particle again. And. I can actually copy and hide here inside of my volume breaker and create those 3600 cells, actually 3600 um, 3, particles, boxes, bricks, pixels, whatever you want, and import them inside of Thinker Particles and work with those boxes. But I prefer to work with a single object, not with a big amount of particles. So now I can create another dynamic set actually I have it call this import and I want to import this side of my teapot into sinker particles using my particle uh, object to particle node rename it as um, teapot frags and I create a group called this Mm, I know origin or something like this and select my oops origin I don't need origin frags and sam link it to origin group so I import my object frags inside of single particles and that's actually good okay let's back to work I add a little bit of adjustment to my 
a teapot color you just add the default material to the teapot and change it color to black so I can better look on them in a wireframe mode let's back to thinker particles I delete the old dynamic set and create another one let's say um, fragmentation uh, Fiji fragmentation that's something wrong all right and create another group inside of my master system call it pixels so I want to fragment or divide subdivide this object it's still just one object this side of my teapot I want to divide my origin object into fragments using fragment node inside of thinker particle so I just sent all my fragments into pixels group and let's see how it works this fragment node I update my object but it's still one fragment actually one particle inside of thinker particles I decrease this threshold right to 0 1 and now we have 23,000 particles that's too much I think <laughs> actually how these fragments work and he take the um, polygons of the objects and create a fragment uh, based on this polygon I didn't want this so first of all I want to change my color for pixels to something like green color to better identification where is my pixels and just make a little bit of adjustments I want to create just one fragment based on one and lifespan increase till 150 I think or 200 doesn't matter actually I want to change um, to 150 and type maybe maybe 100 will be good I use in the PAL frame rate and I want to make thickness for fragment shape and remaining shape to zero so now when I update my thinker particles come on updating I have just 4000 particles and actually I did want to create the whole particles from the whole object so actually we have many particles I create from one object many different particles and send them to the pixels group but I want to create particles just in the area I want so I can use uh, the Omnilight to say thinker particles where I want to create my particles actually my fragments bricks pixels and so on for this inside of the pix uh, inside of my um, inside of my omni light I want to adjust attenuation because you see this whole volume is my attenuation and you see that uh, all fragments of my teapot is inside of this volume so I just decrease the attenuation till the 10 so now it's 10 units to my attenuation and actually just those fragments those bricks which will be inside of this volume will pass this fragmentation node and go inside of pixel group so just auto save and let's see all oh, right I'm <laughs> I made my Omni light, but not include inside a fragment. So I check the use light checker box and pick my Omni. All right, that's fine. Okay, now you see that we have only come on how many? Two hundred and sixty-six particles. That's because we select just part of them. 
to my pixel group another one particle is just this object so this is like an limitation and we can use this method for um, let's say we have a big object and there is um, 10 20 thousand particles uh, 10 thousand uh, fragments inside of it and we don't need to import all of them inside of single particles we just import only one object and then select the uh, volume of this object on just one side anyway and say okay just here create particles not from all object okay so we create uh, actually those green particles now will be my voxels or pixels and here we have a spreading we have a spreading uh, because I want to create an explosions uh, create an explosion from these particles, but after that I want to spread my voxelization to the other side of my object. So it's like, a, you know, a rust on a metal will spread for my teapot. And for that I will use the spreading time and correct spreading. So spreading time will show me how many time spreading will continue so um, I think I, I will create explosion not in zero frame I don't like it Pref I prefer to use some like a 10 15 20 frame to create a uh, dynamic because not always in our things um, explosions and other stuff will start on the first frame so I will create explosion on frame 20, let's say, and the spreading will end uh, maybe on frame 80. So for that, on my fragment, I turn on my fragmentation just in frame 20. And it's end somewhere in frame 200, it doesn't matter. So with this, you see that on a first frame, second, third, and till the frame 20, there is no nothing. So it's just all fragments is uh, still on the place. And just on frame 20, those fragments in green is go into pixels group. So uh, about my spreading. Uh, let's say 20 to 80 this is 60 frames and the distance let's say 10 for a moment just for testing now let's see what is look like on a frame 80 how many particles will include all right that's not a big spreading <laughs> Just calculating. Come on. All right. Now you see a little bit. Not enough. Maybe 20. Okay, that's better. That's much better. 20. Uh, I think that will be enough. I didn't want to go too deep inside of object because we used just half of it. All right. Good. So, 20, 60, nice. And now I want to create uh, some forces. The first force is going to be my gravity, sure. I want to add a gravity. And forces, it's called group forces. And add my black box, six, dynamic gravity. And I prefer to create a group calling gravity gravity and add all my groups to my gravity just those groups which we need to include to gravity so my origin object which is this part of my teapot is not going anywhere it's not falling down actually so I still placing on my origin group and it's not will be influenced Actually, the gravity will not have any influence inside of my origin. So this teapot will be my origin. I can even uh, choose a neutron for this 
So for my gravity, I choose my gravity group. Because inside of this gravity, we can have many groups. It's not just a teapot, maybe something falling down with them. And <clears throat> inside of forces, I want to add my explosion. So I create a velocity node. And this velocity, we create explosion for first particle group, actually those particles, which we will include into pixels group in frame 20. So nothing falling down, it's just now I'm dating. And I want my group pixels. And I want to use my velocity. Um, I just want to take my Omni light a little bit like here, so the explosion will be better. I want those boxes will fly away from my lights to different directions. So I use my lights as uh, my Omni light, like an uh, explosion center. All right. So you can use any geometry, you know, points, helpers, dummy objects, anything you want to create an explosion center, but. Anyway, I have a light here, so I will use not just for detection my fragments. I want to use my lights for my explosion center too. So I take node group, uh, node, 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 <laughs> and select my light. I want to use position of my light as a position for my velocity. So now, if I choose velocity, let's say 50, right? All my particles will just fly away to uh, fly away to my z-axis. All right, so it's straight up. But I want to create explosion, so each of this particle, each of these boxes, will fly away from the center in a different direction. So I need to create the vector for each of these boxes. For that, I adding the position from the node, actually from my center of uh, omni light of this position and now all my fragments just you know go into my omni light like on a black hole if i want to go in from my light i need to add my speed in a minus and now they fly away from my omni light so it's like an explosion Adding a little bit of variation, this influence uh, of my velocity will be a little bit slower when I turn on shape collision, because those particles have a little bit of friction, and it will slow down the um, the flying of my objects. But you know the explosions here and those particles falling down. Boom, falling down. But I did want to add velocity for all time life of my uh, thing. I want to just add in 20 frames. So I create explosion. Explosion basically using just one frame for adding the speed for my particles. In other frame is just uh, it doesn't have any influence on them. So I want to turn on my velocity just when uh, my, expl my explosion works. So just 20, 21 frame. Bam! And that's it. So till 21, 21st frame, my particles just falling down. Let's create some ground because they're just falling somewhere. And for ground, just simple boxes in. Will be good. It's my grid. Um, let's say 140, zero, 0, and minus 10. Come on. And that will be my ground. Alright, put it into origin group. And of course, I want to use it as a deflector inside of sinking particles. So I create another group. Call it. Come on. 
deflectors inside of my import dynamic set I'm including object to particle let's rename it deflectors 2 and pick my teapot here I think and my ground so the both of those element will be my deflectors and I add cap holes and I have my shell too all right and then I hide my origin and unhide my thinking particles again <coughs> I add my deflectors uh, actually but I not path them into group and deflector all right so now they here we can see them just for a moment okay here they are but there is no any type of collision because we don't have shape collision in our thing let's edit shape collision with the shape collision node <coughs> So I want to use my origin and gravity group inside of my group for shape collision and my deflector group inside of my actually deflectors, right? So for that I create another one group calling shape collision and put this group upper and include origin and gravity inside of this shape collision group. So we have two main groups shape collision and deflectors. All right, now adding shape collision here. Just update. Let's <clears throat> take some time because collision is calculating much longer than just velocities. Now that's much better. You can see how particles colliding with the ground plane, colliding with themselves. And actually I have a little bit of problem. You see those particles are they are big, they're too big, and I don't like to use them inside of my simulation. So I can find them and delete. Inside of my fragmentation, uh, I think that will be good we add my I add my ori not origin sorry sure I want to remove at my pixel group pixel group and I want to delete within the particle um, sorry not data particle die node I want to select select which particle I want to die just disable, uh, disable sync um, shape collision because I didn't want to spend much time for create my simulation. I just want to see what size of my particle I want to have for dying. Okay, so I need to test. I'm creating just something like test group. Make it maybe a yellow color and say okay, just particles which have size uh, maybe let's test more than three will be included and deleted actually except of particle die I want to set standard group operator note here's my group here we go and turn on just for big particles all right so now you see that um, somehow they not yellow oh I don't said where I want to put them okay now we see they have to be yellow all right so this you see some none it's not a good actually boxes for me well then this too is not bad but those planes as some geometry bug 
I don't like to use them inside of my simulation, so I just delete them. So maybe from 0 to 5, let's see how it looks. All right. All right. Maybe 4. Nice. All right, so this I want disable, this I want enable. Now all my those unneeded particle will be deleted. That's much better. All right, so we have a nice explosion. Maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I, uh, maybe minus 75 speed for my velocities. And what actually I want to create? You can say, okay, uh, the most of these particles are like a boxes, maybe from different angle or from this distance. We can say, okay, there is a boxes, definitely, maybe. But when we create the camera near this teapot, somewhere like here, we see that there's not a boxes. This not a boxes and add this, this, this. So almost all those particles, all those fragments, is not a box. Because we actually have non-linear object, we have nice smooth sides on a teapot and create boxes inside of his um, size, inside of his, his edges we can't. Because we need to create many, many very small boxes, but I want to use this size. So we have to deal with this problem and I know how to deal with and for that I create another one dynamic set and call it pixels gen. So what I want to do, <clears throat> I want to see on those particles which I created on my fragmentation <clears throat> set and actually I want to change this, 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 all of that particles into voxels. You know, just change. Nobody see it, actually. How <laughs> I want to do this? Well, I just take my pixel group and say, all right, I want to create or generate without position burn the new particles. So I take my pixels and just add this into my all group, so it's not have any influence inside of shape collision or deflector on gravity, so it's just groups, just group pixels. It's not having influence and don't have any shape collision. And we can make them unrenderable and even turn off for from my uh, simulation visual, so I just hide them. They are inside of simulation, but we just don't see them. So I want to use very simple thing. I want to say, okay, when my particles creating inside of my pixel group, I want to create another one particles, just one particles based on each old fragment and this particle will have straight cube forms for this I add my particle H node and said alright I create in particle just when my pixels will enter the group and create inside of gravity the new group call it let's say boxes and add into boxes. Life span more, I don't need even a speed actually, so they just creating. And then, then I'm going to forces and I want to apply my velocity now just on my boxes group, not in my pixels. 
All right. So what I want to do, I want to uh, to link my size to size of created boxes and add a little bit of variation, maybe 50%. So those boxes will be a little bit different from each other. And okay, I can see them. Yeah, here's those particles. Let's make them, I don't know, maybe blue. It doesn't matter. <coughs> Just to make a different color. And now I want to add my boxes group and set them standard shape, which will be cubes. All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> They are a little bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> All right, just um, along this, I think somewhere is a big, very big particle. <laughs> okay, so I want to use my scale node for adding a little bit of variation, maybe fifty percent, and increase the scale of my boxes. Ooh, no too much. 150. So now they uh, closely have the same size over one and five units, which is I uh, create inside my teapot with a volume breaker. And they just flying around. Another thing I want to add this, it's my dynamic, come on, spinning. I want this to spin a little bit, something like this. All right, so it's none. It's a little bit of random, a little bit of chaos. Okay, I think that it's time for creating my, our first preview. I want to see my animation. Just create a camera. Come on, create a camera. Don't, don't want to create a camera. Yeah, I had. Take a good view from this. And let's say I want to grab my viewport and create a preview animation with maximum of the quality. And create it. I think, but before I do this, I want to create cache for my a particle. Sure, I don't like this point. Come on. Delete it. <clears throat> For this I prefer to use caching inside of these groups other than use my playback cache for all master dynamic. So I create another dynamic set, call it pixels and just drop all those groups inside of my pixels. And now I want to set cache for them. Call it pixels version 01. Okay, and create maybe 100 just frames. We'll see later. Okay, out of save. Well, actually, yes, it's a good reason to save my project. And cache record. Now I can see how my particles will collide with each other. I think I will <laughs> add a little bit more size because they are too low as for me. I want a little bit bigger particles. Now that is all. Let's finish and we see how those particles just falling down. So what I want to do finally I want to change just stop caching and with particle gener generator I want to increase my scale and for come on 
or particle die, I want to use threshold a little bit smaller. Okay. And actually, that's actually it. But we have some importations here because that's I want to play cache. We have a little bit of intersection between the particles because they burned the not creating for the um, when our simulation start. So sometimes they created too close for each other and they have intersection and you hear here. But when they falling down, we need to set the more voxels for them. So actually for shape collision operator, we need to create a little bit more voxel inside of grid. So first of all, for my boxes, I want to create a physics operator box. So it will calculate a little bit faster because it's all boxes. But for my origin, I leave this uh, actually kind of a smash. And for boxes, I like box, which is good. All right. Um, now, increase amount of read and age samples, and for my origin, I want oh, I have here 30, 10. I already have. I decrease a little bit of friction to my origin because I don't want to stack uh, that my pixel is just stack uh, on the surface of my teapot. I want them colliding with them and just falling down to ground. And for boxes, I decrease the friction a little bit bigger, so they will slice one for each other. Uh, all right, that's fine. I just want to create target spot to light my teapot and to start work with surrender settings. Come on, yeah, here we are some lights and I will work with V-Ray go to camera come on camera oh, one and I want to recalculate this thing again so I record my master dynamic again cache record start and we're back again. That's what we have after the simulation. I just turn off my ground and another part of my teapot and create a simple uh, blue glossy material. Actually, I'm not created. I just uh, get it from the V-Ray materials pack and uh, just apply to teapot. And I want them. Uh, I want to make this more, you know, like a plastic. Uh, then the basic material. So let's see how it creating destruction. You see that my box is a little bit bigger than it was in the simulation. More closely, more closely to that what I want. So I turn on my light. Um, actually, with uh, after resimulation, I turn off my light. I don't need this light anymore because I don't want to use this for lightening my object. I have spotlight I created earlier and let's see how it works in um, real time. Just create a simple play blast on preview. So actually create those particles we can easily use uh, I don't know just a texture on our teapot we can use different kind of matters, uh, intersection with geometry, lights, and other stuff. But this method, what I... Okay, let's see. It's fine, actually. Bam. And it's destroying into pixel like it, like rusty metal. All right, it's good. So the next thing is compositing because I don't like to use many shaders or other type of materials because it's not my work actually. I create just visual effects and 
pro shaders create other people's. So what I want to do, I want to create just a little bit of gradation, a little bit of um, uh, different color to make those boxes more, I don't know, more interesting. And um, for that I use simple blend material. Come on. Show me your blend material. Oops, sorry. The standard blend material. And it doesn't matter. And I want to use this material just for my pixels. So for that, into my thingy particles and inside of standard shape, I can use material. I just edit here as an instance. And I want to use uh, distance. So creating a gradient inside of this material will change my material from one to another uh, using the distance parameter. So for that I create a mask using just like a gradient ramp maybe. And with the gradient ramp, I don't know, just make a little bit more. Like this, different type of colors. And for material 2, I choose, um, let's say, very light. Very light material. Add a little bit of intensity and change um, a little bit of color, more bluish tint. And as my material 1, actually, I can use any material I want. I want to use a ray material. Uh, sorry, we ray MT, MTL, and just create something like an orange color. So a little bit of reflect, reflection maybe. That's gonna be nice. And um, it doesn't matter actually. I can even change my gradient ramp into box type just uh, swap now okay this is good but here make more black areas and say right here and maybe add a little bit of noise so the gradient <coughs> will be a little bit different come on Add a fractal noise, and that's actually it. Maybe more size, something like three, and not such intense. All right, more grids. All right, maybe like this. Okay, <clears throat> and now I want to. Um, do you know how to change thinker particles material? Actually, I close this and open that. You here, see, so we have some materials. We have a standard shape. We have a multi sub object, and we can choose. Uh, we can change materials inside of this group. This is actually multi sub object, and we can change after simulation. We can change materials here. So we don't need to resim our um, actually simulation. So let's make some renders. For that, I will unhide my origin object. It's my teapot, and come on. Actually, I don't know why, but there is volume breaker. I don't need any volume breaker there. Shell option, I don't need to. So I can even make slice a little bit closer, but that's not the matter because I will render my teapot on one frame and then render without it all those fragments. 
So I just unhide this and except of my ground plane, which is here, my ground, I want to use for rendering, I want to use V-Ray plane. So where's my plane? Here you go. And I have material for this. It's just ground uh, gray material with a little bit of reflection. And let's make some settings. And uh, I want to enable my GI options, which will turn on already. I use my light cache and irradiance map by default settings medium current preset and with a light, a light cache default settings too. Another thing I want to use for my environment, I want to use V-Ray HD right map for this. And I want to use and just this map. I like this HD array and add it to environment. Add in here and here. That's nice. All right, so I change my view to camera and let's start default render. I want to uncheck my frame buffer uh, saving and in 7720 we see how it's lighting up. Well actually I like those reflections on teapot but I don't like reflections on my great material because it's will be a little bit noisy so First of all, I want to rotate a little bit of my HDRI map. Let's see, 35. Great, good. So I more like um, this plane because it's more like um, it's not so bright now. And here is good reflection for my teapot, except for this black areas. Actually, I don't know. I don't like this. I will fix it. <coughs> and here. Um, the next thing I want to go my V-Ray plane and turn on turn on receive GI for this. So now when I choose render yeah that's better. And have a nice ingredient on my plane. It's like a chrome or a glass. It's much better now. All right, turn this on. Actually, turn this off. And let's see what I have with my boxes. Now let's see rendering. And you see how gradient works. Those particles which you just created, they are uh, inside of great light materials. And once they fly away from the origin body they make more orange and they're not so bright they it's like you know cooling effect the first particles are hot and they just cooling we have some troubles on the size when our origin object and our um, fragmented object is colliding but I think it's too easy to fix on a post and compositing. For this I want to create a little bit of layers. Go into element render uh, render elements and add for my V-ray. I like to use some technical passes uh, like um, velocities, bump normals for color correction. So we can create a nice gradient, some animation, lighting and other stuff. So I take a global animation, lighting, I don't know I will use or not, but yes, auto save, okay. Bump normals, global animation, lightning, and um, what I need else? Well, I don't have any refractions, so I choose reflection. I want to use specular, I want to use self illumination because those lights 
lighting boxes are used self illumination with the ray light material and I want to choose velocity path D depth and don't have any SSS and yeah it's good except for that I want to use my extra texture and I want to create some kind of uh, where's my material palette it's just disappeared so all right here you go and I want to create a very dirt material for the ambient occlusion come on here here we go uh, decrease the radius to 5 increase subdivs to 16 and call it ambient occlusion and I want to add into texture I don't like use a name like um, you know when we add v ray material v ray dirt material come on why don't, oh sorry uh, this material I'm use v ray dirt material we create uh, the name called map number 80, uh, 58 in this case and then when we drag when we drag this map drag map inside of this texture then the name of the map will include it into this name and when we render the sequence, the file sequence then the number of sequence will add it to this number and it's sometimes bad for um, recognition of um, compositing programs so we um, if the number of frames is like 0, 0, 0, 1 then programs think that this number is 58,000 0, 0, 1 so I prefer to rename my ambient occlusion rename my dirt map and when I drag this map into texture the name of my extra texture is just V-Ray Extra Texture Ambient Occlusion so there is no any numbers or something like this and velocity let's actually find the more frame various many velocities and this frame is 22 and create start to render I want that we ray will calculate for me the maximum velocity so actually we have a normals lighting reflection and we have a self reflection you see those boxes are self illuminated specs maybe we don't have it the depths always need and we ray ambient occlusion we have a nice occlusion here so where is my velocity i have those now cancel and we see that maximum velocity in this frame is 34 i maybe set it to 50 or 40 i think that will be enough another thing i want to add it's my multimat element just call mat mask one so this will be mask by materials and I want to set up my materials here. I want to use the ID3 for my main material for, for teapot. And I want to change my ID material for my thinking particles. So I change my standard shape, which I want, which I create as my gradient. So I want to add uh, the ID2 actually I made it for the orange color and I choose ID1 for my light color so now when I check my box material ID by default is unchecked I check it and when I make a render all my materials will have the mask and that will be good I can create a color correction by those masks and that's actually it so for the start I go to frame 20 that's actually when 
all things begin to explode and other and I hide my sinker particles and just leave my origin teapot disable again volume breaker here what you what you doing here and disable slice so just I want to render my teapot without anything without any sinker particles and I save my um, save my file to disk within frame buffer and make render so I just rendering just one frame frame 20 that's how it looks, it's pretty quick and then starting from frame 21 till the end, till frame 100 I will render the health of my teapot from the origin and the another health of teapot is from sinker particles and merging them in nuke create compositing so right in output nice good and go to frame 21 and say the range from 20 21 to 100 and for this thing I will hide my actually I want to enable my slice and unhide my thinking particles here we go all this thing will be masked in nuke so I'll fix it uh, why I want to render that part of teapot because here close it to the end I have the back side of teapot so if I hide them there just be a hole so when I hide my original I will keep this part with mask and this part with mask other thing I will animate so that will be good for me alright just start rendering and let's go to compose 